Do you feel that? Basketball season has finally arrived. On this episode of the Rebel Report, we've got lots of hoops for you and much more. First, the UNLV Run Rebels show us a taste of what we are going to be seeing this upcoming season. Then, the Lady Rebels explain how hungry they are for even more wins this season. We even speak in studio with head coach Kathy Olivier and even take you around the conference. You won't be able to get this anywhere else but here on the Rebel Report. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the newest edition of The Rebel Report, filmed right here at UNLV. I'm Kaylin Sokel. And I'm Megan Platt. Thanks for tuning in to those who are watching online or on television. This season is finally here. Basketball season, that is. The Rowan Rebels and Lady Rebels both have high expectations, but let's begin our show with the men. Jason Toktagian takes us to UNLV's only exhibition match of the season and was decided with a buzzer beater season is already in the books for the Running Rebels, but with a new season comes not only new expectations, but new players. The Rebels look to get in regular season form with an exhibition match against Montana State Billings. The key for the Rebels is to build chemistry between the new players and the veterans. The game kicked off with senior Noah Rebotham and sophomore Cheek Mbake Jeong scoring 19 of the Rebels' 35 first half points. None of the three freshman players that featured in the first half scored, but that was soon to change with a wonderful hook shot by Jonathan Chichua. After a back and forth contest with three pointers galore, the UNLV Rebels relied on a Chris Clyburn layup with 1.4 seconds left in the game to scrape their way to an 83-81 victory. Head coach Marvin Menzies shared his initial reaction to the nail-biting ball game. Holy smokes, you know, <laughs> I hope we don't have one of those. I wanted it to be uh, competitive, but I didn't want it to be come down to the last shot. So, uh, nonetheless, they persevered. Um, I thought that might have almost been a charge on that last play when Chris scored, and then I watched the tape, and I thought it was a good bucket, so... That was good. Starting point guard Noah Rebotham highlighted that the new guys are already showing discipline this early in the season. I think that team's well disciplined. Um, I think guys on my team, um, you know, there's an adjustment. You know, guys get in the lane. For instance, I remember Bryce on the Euro step kind of got blocked. And in high school, he was probably not used to seeing that. But, you know, that team, I thought they played well. Um, they were very disciplined. And they also see that no matter if you're playing a Division Eight team, you know, those teams are good. This exhibition match really was able to showcase what these running Rebels have in store. For the Rebel Report, I'm Jason Taktagian. You know, the freshman guard Trey Woodbury did not play due to an ankle injury, but we hope he features in the season opener against Loyola Marymount on November 10th. Now we go to the Lady Rebels who have six players returning to last year's conference champion it's along with a member who is one of the top in contention for one of the top awards in the country. Caitlin Mansala went to Lady Rebels Media Day to learn more about the athlete who is receiving such award. The Lady Rebels 14 Mountain West victories has set a new school record. They're also looking forward to another recognition as center forward Katie Powell is on the Lisa Leslie's award watch list. Off season is over for the Lady Rebels and they're back on their court training hard after becoming Mountain West. <laughs> Do you feel that? Basketball season has finally arrived. On this episode of the Rebel Report, we've got lots of hoops for you and much more. First, the UNLV Run Rebels show us a taste of what we are going to be seeing this upcoming season. Then, the Lady Rebels explain how hungry they are for even more wins this season. We even speak in studio with head coach Kathy Olivier and even take you around the conference. You won't be able to get this anywhere else but here on the Rebel Report.
Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the newest edition of The Rebel Report, filmed right here at UNLV. I'm Kaylin Sokell. And I'm Megan Platt. Thanks for tuning in to those who are watching online or on television. This season is finally here. Basketball season, that is. The Rowan Rebels and Lady Rebels both have high expectations, but let's begin our show with the men. Jason Toktagian takes us to UNLV's only exhibition match of the season and was decided with a buzzer beater. Season is already in the books for the Running Rebels, but with a new season comes not only new expectations, but new players. The Rebels look to get in regular season form with an exhibition match against Montana State Billings. The key for the Rebels is to build chemistry between the new players and the veterans. The game kicked off with senior Noah Rebotham and sophomore Cheek Mbake Jeong scoring 19 of the Rebels' 35 first half points. None of the three freshman players that featured in the first half scored, but that was soon to change with a wonderful hook shot by Jonathan Chichua. After a back and forth contest with three pointers galore, the UNLV Rebels relied on a Chris Clyburn layup with 1.4 seconds left in the game to scrape their way to an 83-81 victory. Head coach Marvin Menzies shared his initial reaction to the nail-biting ball game. Holy smokes, you know, <laughs> I hope we don't have one of those. I wanted it to be uh, competitive, but I didn't want it to be come down to the last shot. So, uh, nonetheless, they persevered. Um, I thought that might have almost been a charge on that last play when Chris scored, and then I watched the tape. It's in Max Center. Fans can look forward to the return of top players, along with the welcoming of new incoming freshmen. It is a game before the regular season opens and the Brennan Rebels' last second win has set the bar for its fans. With the final score of 83-81 to 81, against MSU Billings, fans' expectations are high. I just, I was part of this, um, I was a student here when we were national champions and it was just amazing what our city did and comes together and I know the city of Las Vegas loves our Brennan Rebels so it would just be great to see them have a great year again. And we just want them to play hard and fight hard, and we'll be here rooting them on the whole way. Fans can expect the return of notable players such as senior guard Noel Robotham and senior forward Shakur Justin. The Rebels are also excited to welcome incoming star recruit Bryce Hamilton. New season, new players. Hopefully we can make it to the NCAA tournament. I love coach uh, Marvin Menzies, and I just want the Rebels to win. Along with all of these sports action, the new season will also offer fans halftime fun, food and drinks. The Rebels' official season kickoff will be Saturday, November 10th against Loyola Marymount University. For Rebel Report, I'm Cindy Mercado. The new scoreboard we mentioned at the top of the story was paid for by a $5 million donation from Boyd Gaming. UNLV football returns to Sam Boyd Stadium with a five-game losing streak, and things wouldn't get any easier with Fresno State paying Vegas a visit. Unfortunately, the slide would continue as the Rebels lose to 23rd-ranked Bulldogs 48-3. The Bulldogs scored the first touchdown of the game in the first quarter. Then they kept on adding to the scoreboard and led 17-zip at the half. In the third, the Rebels lost momentum with Max Gillum through a pick. Then in the fourth quarter, UNLV could not stop the Bulldogs from gaining 31 points. But UNLV redeemed themselves with a 28-yard field goal by Evan Pantels. And Gillum admits they did not put their best foot forward. Yeah, they were definitely a really good, a really good team, really good defense. Uh, but I thought we could have played a lot better. I could have played a lot better. Uh, a lot of us could. So we're gonna we're gonna have to do that next week. The Rebels fall two and seven on the season with the loss, and this is still looking. It's still looking for its first conference victory. The team has three more games left of their season as of today's recording, November eighth, and they play against their top three rivals, SDSU, Hawaii, and UNR. The NHL has announced a historic partnership with MGM Resorts International. Pro sports betting has been taboo for decades, but a May Supreme Court ruling is changing the game. Lydia Vasquez explains how. 
This follows the NBA's agreement for MGM to become their official gaming partner. So, who are the big winners in this deal? I spoke with gaming gurus to find out. Kevin, 325 Texas State, 40 over 31. Robert Walker has made a living in the sports betting industry for decades, but he says he's concerned about the new NHL deal with MGM. Right now, you can go to 20 different vendors and get in-game wagering information. If you can only go to one, um, that price will go way up, and they'll be, everybody will be out of business. The NHL says MGM will have access to real-time advanced game data that currently is being developed by the league. Part of the new data includes player and puck tracking, and sportsbooks can also start to use team logos. Well, I think it shows the complexities that are involved in sports betting and also the tremendous allure both for the operators like MGM Resorts and also for the leagues. So I think it shows that there's a lot of potential upside in the legalization of sports betting. Although it's a major milestone in betting, it only accounts for about 2% of casinos' revenue. I wouldn't expect to see a huge economic benefit to the city right off the bat. This doesn't prevent other gaming companies from making a similar deal. The league can enter into partnerships with other sports betting companies. Obviously the proliferation of, of sports betting is going to help no matter what. Uh, more games will be on TV. I think in-game wagering, which is going to be tough with hockey, but I think that will increase it. But we'll see. Like I said, I'm willing to keep an open mind. Just over 22 million people tuned into hockey last season. Now, it being a sport you can bet on, Robert says we can expect viewership and game attendance to skyrocket. Back to you guys. Thanks, Lydia. The league is still working out the logistics, but plan to release more information on how customers will benefit from this partnership in the upcoming year. The 35th year of Shriners Hospitals for Children Open ended on November 4th at TPC Summerlin. And if you missed it, Michaela Jackson has more on the close ending and which well-known golfers played at the tournament. The 2018 Shriners Open held some familiar golfers, from Jordan Spieth to Ricky Fowler. But one 25-year-old took home the cup. It was not just about the Eagles and the Birdies at TPC Summerlin. The Raiderettes showed off their Raider pride and Shriners' patience enjoyed the tournament. Plus, fans got the chance to see ranked ninth in the world Ricky Fowler, and he enjoyed playing in Las Vegas. Really, anything you want, it's here. Um, there's as much fun as you want to have, good golf, great food. I'm looking forward to some good food again tonight, but um, no, it's good to be back. I, I've, I've played well here, and it was nice to have a good week. But Fowler was not the only one playing on the greens. UNLV alumni Ryan Moore finished the tournament 10 under par, and he couldn't help but enjoy playing at home. I mean, it, it's great. Uh, you know, hearing the, the Rebels chants, uh, walking around, and uh, Get a good crowd out there all week. Uh, it, it's, it's one I look forward to every single year. Last year's champion Patrick Cantley ended the tournament just one stroke behind the leader, Bryson DeChambeau, but he sealed his win over Patrick Cantley. I thought I had a two-shot lead. Uh, I thought he made par. I didn't hear any crazy roars or anything. But uh, when I walked past the sign on 17, I saw he got to... 20 under and I was like, whoa, okay, you know, I, I got to focus and, and hammer down and execute some good shots coming in and that's what I was able to do. DeChambeau earned the grand prize, but most importantly, some Shriners patients were honored at the event and one patient couldn't help but enjoy himself on the last day. Oh, this tournament is just awesome. It brings great awareness to this great uh, fundraiser, Shriners Hospitals for Children. Um, I've been going to the hospital since I was two months old and I can't thank them enough. So coming to this tournament, it's a lot of fun. Plus, Alec wants to become a sports broadcaster just like us here at the Rebel Report. Uh, when I realized I wasn't going to be seven feet tall and 300 pounds, uh, I wanted to be the first one to uh, break the news. I wanted to be the first one to start the conversation. So, uh, and, with, and because of Shriners Hospitals for Children, uh, I can fulfill my dreams. Shriners Open broke their attendance record. For the Rebel Report, I'm Michaela Jackson. Their attendance for the tournament of 53,600 fans. Now we are going to send it over to Brandon with this week's Rebel Report timeout. Rebel Report timeout. Hey guys, I'm Brandon McGregor and we're here with Coach 
KO, Coach Kathy Olivier, head coach of the women's basketball team. So before we get into anything, I just want to give you guys a quick, some quick history. So if you didn't know, Coach did used to play for UNLV, and she was an All-American. So Coach, as, as transitioning to, from a player to a coach, how was that transition? Well, I'm going to have to look way back and think about that <laughs> for a second. Um, I mean, I actually love playing here as a player. I had some great teammates. The professors were all so nice to me, and the community just embraced the Lady Rebels. And it kind of got me where I wanted to coach. Um, I was a teacher at the beginning, and then I got into coaching, and it just um, really just took over my life and my spirit. And I was very passionate about it, and I've had a great time coaching at my alma mater. So what is it that keeps you motivated to coach? I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. I love seeing the growth in our players. I, I love seeing them get better every day, and they're just not getting better as basketball players. They're getting better as people, and they're growing as young ladies. And I'm just very, um, I wasn't say impressed, but I'm not about me, but just about how they have grown and how they represent the community and represent UNLV in such a high manner. So I know you used to coach um, at UCLA. So what kept you, you know, coaching for all these years? Just the, the I love team. it. It's, it's my passion. Mm -hmm. um, it's my world. I have a, a daughter that actually played for me at UCLA. Uh, my sister played basketball. We were a sports family. My brother played baseball at USC. Um, we've all just taken care of business on either the court or the field. And it's just been so much fun. And I feel like it's a place where people get together and it's a gathering for families and keeps people out of trouble. And it again, makes them turn into really quality people. So you guys are cold Mountain West champions. Do you feel that this team can get that far or further? Well, I love that you talk about that, but it's so far in the past. Mm -hmm. um, we had a great year last year. We have a lot of people returning. We're going to miss Brooke Johnson. She was um, a starter for us and did so many positive things for the Lady Rebels. But we have great leadership back. We have six seniors. Uh, we have a couple freshmen that are very explosive. Um, I, I just think our team is, is good and, and, and ready to compete. And hopefully we can do the things that the last year's team did because winning is very, very fun. So I know we have a, new, a few new faces um, on the roster, Justine, Justice Etheridge and Cambria Elsey. Can you describe what you feel they can bring to the team this year? Uh, both ultra talented basketball players. Cam is an athletic point guard who has good size, who is a great, not a good passer, a great passer. She's learning how to play at this high level of Division I. Uh, Justice is a local who played at Centennial High School, four-time state champion, uh, can shoot the ball from the outside, gets after it on the defensive end. They both are ultra-talented, and as far as the season goes, we see them getting more and more time as the season goes on. We also have another new face, Brandon Morrison, a new assistant, <laughs> new assistant coach. Can you explain why his position is so important? I love that you talk about Brandon. Brandon was someone who actually was a student at UNLV. He was also on our scout team at UNLV for the Lady Rebels. And then he was our video coordinator. So he really paid his dues. And now he's our assistant coach. And Brandon does such a great job. He knows his role. He's um, very dedicated to seeing the Lady Rebels be successful. So what is it that makes this team so much different than any other team that you've coached in the past? Well, that's a good question. I mean, this team, um, you know, we start on Friday um, and we'll see where it goes. Right now, I think the leadership and the depth, we have so many people that can play so many positions. So we're very versatile and very deep in every position. So um, let's see how competitive we are. And let's see where it takes us, because I, I feel like this team has really, um, they're just a um, very determined group, and hopefully we can do as well as we did last year and win another championship. Well, thank you for coming out, Coach. I'm fired up about this season. You can catch the UNLV women's basketball team as they take on Wright State November 9th. I'm going to toss it to Jason with the panel. Thanks, Brandon. Welcome to the panel discussion for this week. We have... Lydia Vasquez, Marcos from Santander, and Michaela Jackson. So let's jump right into it. We're going to be talking about men's basketball, UNLV men's basketball, where they played their first exhibition match 
Final score was 83-81 to Montana State Billings. So talk to us about your initial feelings and your reactions to that match. Okay, so before we get started, can I just quickly point out the color coordination we got going on? Black, red, black, red, Ugg boots and Adidas. This yeah. is where you guys scream and say, yay! <laughs> anyway, so we played the first exhibition game against um, Montana, and they're a D2 school. So I can understand why people can kind of be a little hesitant about where we're going to be going this season. But, I mean, the top four players for the team were all seniors and juniors, you know, with Rollins scoring 23 points. So I feel like it was more an experience on experience kind of thing, not necessarily a D2 versus a D1. Because if Duke were to play with their freshman and sophomore, we'd get spanked, like, let's be honest, you know? So that's where I feel with that game. And then also... They got kind of lucky. They were shooting threes like with no hesitation from three to five feet behind the three-point uh, line. So we did win by two points, and it's kind of unfortunate. You can say, oh, we, lost, we almost lost to a D2 school. But given the situation, I don't think it's something to be worried about. Okay, so with that being said, um, since we don't really have to worry about it too much, again, it doesn't really count. Uh, do you think the UNLV Rebels have a chance to eclipse the 20 and 13 record that they had last season? You know, we did lose three of our top players, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to kind of beat our record from last season. But I've seen them play with a lot more energy, and I feel like they, they bond well together, so I'm hoping. But it will be a little difficult, considering that. Yeah, so now uh, transitioning from UNLV basketball to UNLV football. So, UNLV football recently played Fresno State. They lost uh, big time. Mm -hmm. But mathematically, there is still a chance to make it into the bowl game. What's your take on that? I would say it, every, anything is possible until that last second is down. Once that last second is over, then we can say, okay, it's impossible, they can't make it. But until that moment, everything is possible. You never know what could happen. Um, they're playing San Diego State, San Diego Aztecs. They're, that's their next game. Um, interesting fact, they haven't beat San Diego in San Diego since 2000. So it's been 18 years since they've beat them. I would say Tony Sanchez has a lot of pressure just because they've allowed so many, so many yards. Um, they've allowed about 470 yards and they've allowed also about 40 points per game. I would say Tony Sanchez has definitely has a not a deficit, but Armani Rogers, he was clear to play, but he didn't play. The thing about Armani, he provides speed he pro he's explosive so that gives him a chance to score more points unfortunately he hasn't played it he hasn't started max gillum he's done good but not good enough i would say definitely they have to be careful with their defense just because like i said they've allowed so many points per game and they've allowed so many yards so it, it, it is possible they just have to watch out on their defense so with weighing all those factors who do you think will be the starting quarterback I'd say definitely uh, Max Gillum is going to be. Maybe, I, I personally believe Tony Sanchez might save Armani Rogers just because, you know, he's, like I said, he's explosive. He provides a lot of things quarterbacks don't provide or can't provide. So he might be saving him for the next season. But, I mean, any, like I said, anything is possible. They could win. Um, they just have to be careful with their defense. Now just to cap this off, give us a little insight or a little prediction uh, for the San Diego State uh, match, you know, they have to win the last three games. Do you think they're going to be able to pull off the victory? You know, pressure is good. In some cases, some teams crack under pressure. So, and like I said, Tony Sanchez has a lot of pressure, especially losing bad to all these, to all these teams. Um, but I'd say, like I said, anything is possible. So, so just we have to see what happens. Yeah, no, definitely. Now we're going to finish this off. Michaela Jackson. Eric Halla, one of your favorite hockey players he is. Uh, for the Golden Knights, has a really bad knee injury. Quickly give us a summary. What happened? Injury report. Okay. First off, it was a clean shot or clean check. And when Halla cut, he kind of like hit the wall. And then you kind of just watch that knee. And then his knee kind of went to the outside. And I just felt that pain. And then he went down. And then the Golden Knights actually tweeted about... Um, <coughs> about like what they expect of Hala or like what his injury report is. This is what Galan says. He's not really good, well not good, but like he's not specific on the actual injury. It's just like a lower body injury. And they said that he will be at the road games these next three, and but he won't be playing. So that means two things. That either means he's only out for two months, he'll recover for the spring, or he's out for the entire season. Again, this hurts the second line, because we just got Pacioretty back from his upper body injury, 
and then Stastny's out for two months. So our second line is hurting right now. Right, it's, a, it's, it's really complicated. So thank you guys so much for your answers, and we're going to send it back to the desk. UNLV women's soccer ended their season October 26th, but fear not, soccer fans, UNLV men's soccer team continues on after a win against Utah Valley. That's right. Our very own Naomi Brown went out to see the team play their last regular season game against GSU before moving into the quarterfinals. UNLV men's soccer takes on Grand Canyon University in their last regular season home game, and it's senior night. Peter Johan Memorial Field was packed with Rebel soccer fans as a few players celebrated their senior night. The UNLV men's soccer team recently snagged a win against Utah Valley on October 28th and hoped to take another win against Grand Canyon University on November 2nd. The Rebels had a slow start in the first half, only taking five shots and giving up two goals to GCU. Going into halftime, the Rebels trailed behind 2-0. to zero. But in the first minute of the second half, UNLV midfielder Marco Gonzalez scored on a penalty kick, cutting down GCU's lead and putting the Rebels up on the board. In the last few minutes, UNLV tried to tie up the game, but came up short, ending the match 2-1. to one. Despite the loss, Rebel spirits were high as the team celebrated their senior players. Senior defender Jordan Chavez reflects on how the season went with his teammates. It's actually been amazing. I get a good group of guys where we bond. We bonded together for four years, and uh, obviously leaving them is, is tough. But going into postseason, I hope to extend extend it, and that way we get a little bit more time together. But definitely, I think the camaraderie between the group, being able to live day in and day out with them, is a, an incredible experience. The Rebels will start postseason as the seventh seed in their first WAC tournament game in Seattle on November 7th. For the Rebel Report, I'm Naomi Brown. UNLV men's soccer currently ended their regular season at 5-5-1 in the Mountain West. While we don't yet know who the Rebels will be playing on November 7th, keep an eye on our social medias to find out. That wraps up our sixth, ep sixth ep episode of the season. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media everywhere at Rebel Report UNLV for the latest updates on sports in the Valley. See you next week.